morning how to live victoriously. To understand this question and the discussion, what is victory? What is victory? According to worldly standards, we know what it is. We know what it is to have a good living and supposedly to be successful here in this life. But is that, is that living victoriously? Is laying up treasures which you have to give up at death living victoriously? Sometimes it seems a long time in this world existence. The years sometimes pass slowly, especially when you're younger. But they go very fast when you get along a little bit, do they not? So let us not be misled. Let us not let delusion reign over our consciousness to keep us attached to those things which we have to give up. But you can. You can be victorious. You can conquer life if you understand and supersede the laws of this mundane existence and worldly living. And because we are made in the image of God and because we have not only a, a human aspect but a divine aspect, we can do it because the knowledge and the laws are there and can be known because we are, have intuition of the soul. So that is the way to live victoriously is to supersede these ordinary laws of living which do not end in victory. We all know that if you follow those things that pass away, like ego consciousness, that there'll come a time when it isn't with you. Every night in sleep, where is it? It has gone. It has been relegated to the regions of unconsciousness. So what we should do is to understand and work out that this life to be victorious or for us to be victorious in this life, we must rise above ego consciousness. We must free our soul from attachment as ego to this body. We have the example every night, but we forget it, that the underlying life goes on just the same. We give it up, then we wake up in the morning and start right in with trouble again. Only more of it if we can gather it. That seems to be the normal way of doing nowadays. But that is not what we should do. But we should supersede this ego. Ego attached soul or attachment of the soul to the body. We should know the soul, which is stable, not transient, everlasting, everlasting, peaceful, blissful, eternal existence is what we truly are. But there's a great break in that every night. And there's a great break every day. We forget that. And we are attached to worldly living. So that's the way to live victoriously. You must get at the roots of this unnatural living in which we are attached to this bodily existence and this ego. You must supersede it by knowing. That's all understanding. As our Master used to say, you must increase your knowing of the presence of God within you as the soul. And the soul, remember, is stable, permanent, ever conscious. It doesn't seem possible that in sleep you could be conscious, you can be peaceful. Conscious that you are peaceful. Ordinarily, we are conscious of it when we wake up. We, oh, I had a wonderful sleep. And if you didn't, you didn't have a good sleep. The consciousness is there, but it's not dynamic to your consciousness. Our master has something to say about this. I'll read you at this time from his autobiography. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by the scientists, are called natural laws. We have to supersede these natural laws and arrive at an understanding of those permanent, spiritual, lasting laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. These principles are knowable, are knowable through the science of yoga. Yoga means union, that's all. Union with what? Union with the supernatural, permanent spiritual laws, that's all. 
It is not the physicist, but the self-realized master that comprehends the true nature of matter. Realize that, that it is not those who work with external means. They do not understand life truly. They do not know how to live a victorious life. But the one who has mastered himself, superseded the laws of outward living, mastered them, does not succumb to every whip stick on each side, they are the ones who understand and live victoriously. So victorious living is not for the lazy man. People think if they start to meditate and join a society like self-realization that they begin to take it easy. The moment you take it easy, you're left behind. God is the most busy fellow. He's made all these universes upon universe and has run all things. And still he has everything, but he keeps busy through his laws. And yet we want to take it easy, not knowing anything about God and his greatness. And so to live victoriously, we must understand things. I read a little article that showed a way to live victoriously. It is unique. I don't, as, I don't know as I'd recommend it, but I'd like to read it to you just at this time. I hope you'll enjoy it. It says a tribe in Africa was having a terrible time with its food supplies because of bad crops. The natives went to the chief who said, what we'll do is send a telegram to the Russians telling them that we are having agricultural problems and need their assistance. They will send us seeds and tractors and a hundred young technicians to help us. Then, he said, we will send a telegram to the United States. Of course, the United States is always drawn into this business, telling them that the Russians are sending us seeds and tractors and technicians. And the Americans will send us seeds and tractors and a hundred technicians. When all the technicians arrive, the chief said, we lead them. <laughs> so there you have a way of victory. <laughs> I think that's the, the best one that, <laughs> best account of Victoria's living that I've heard for quite some time. If I hear any bursts of laughter, I don't know where it is coming from. <laughs> so, sometimes, by ordinary standards, we are considered failures. There's no question about that. But, if we work, no matter what our position in life, whatever our station in life is, if we work to please God, and in so doing, know that he is with us in every action, whether we're a failure or success, then we are living victoriously. Remember that one statement. Do not think because you just follow the outward laws of success according to worldly standards that you are living victoriously because you may not be. But whatever station in life you have, if you feel God is with you in everything you do, working to please him, and thereby know he is right with you, standing by your side in everything you do, you are living victoriously. That's what living victoriously means. Not in the ordinary sense of failure or success in this life, but that one substantial thing which is truth. Because this passes away. In a little while we'll all be gone, as far as the body is concerned. But if during this existence... We have taken God with us in every action. And whatever we have done, we've done to please him. Then we are victorious. Right. All's well that ends well. Remember that. All's well that ends well. Because this will pass away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, Jesus said. But my words shall not. Jesus also said... As you remember, for what profited it, it a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? That's the truth. That's why Jesus said, seek first that soul. Seek first the kingdom of God and all other things 
shall be added unto you. And so, never give up. Never give up this attitude of mind. This attitude that no matter what happens, because sometimes it will happen, the things you wish wouldn't happen. Never give up that attitude that you, being a child of God, doing the best you can, even though you do have sieges of ill health and in harmony and trouble. If God is with you, it doesn't make any difference. If God is with you, you have everything. Because he shows everything passes away. The beautiful flowers come, a little while they're gone. People are born, and after some time they pass away as far as the body is concerned, but not the presence of God within them. That's the part we must be familiar with. That's the attitude we must have. No matter what happens, God is with me. I will not leave his side. His master said, leave all else but never God's side. I keep saying that all the time. Not only to myself, but to everybody that I come in contact with. That's the eternal truth. Nothing else is lasting except the presence of God. Know that. Then you are living victoriously, no matter what you are doing. Or even if trouble seems to be with you. Do not bow to that negative state of mind, but with all your strength and might seek that eternal presence of God and realize that the consciousness of God is operating you in you as your mind and all these difficulties, seeming difficulties, must pass away. If you have a strong mind realizing it is God's presence in you and you can overcome all things, if you can but do that. That's why we say in our prayer, I am not this body. Why do we say it over and over again? Gradually it will penetrate into our consciousness and we'll realize it. We do not realize it, that's all. I am not this body. I am the eternal energy of thy presence, O Father, which is eternal, doesn't pass away, does not pass away, and in which I find all fulfillment. If we can but realize that, then we will live victoriously. That's why we follow self-realization, those of us who do, because it not only gives us the theory of victoriously living, it gives us the ways and the means to accomplish that victoriously living, a victorious living. It shows us how to do it. It's all right for me to stand up here and tell you to do it. How are you going to do it? You're going to follow one who did it. You're going to follow one who knew God was with him all the time and left the ways and the means for those who wish or who will will enough to do it to find the same as he found, the bliss and peace of God. <clears throat> so keep this positive consciousness. Why shouldn't we? Why should we, we be pushed around when we're God's children? Why shouldn't we feel what is our birthright? He put us here. We didn't ask to come because we have conditions which we have brought upon us which are our own doing. But nevertheless, God is the cause and end of all things. Therefore, we have a right to demand. Father, I'm sick and tired of not understanding these things. I want to know thee. I have that right because my soul tells me I have that right. Here I am. Take care of me. And if you mean it and feel it and have that mental attitude, it will happen. There is no question about that. The mind is supreme when it's backed up by the realization that it is God's consciousness in you. And so one other reference at this time from our master, thought is a force, even as electricity or gravitation. The human mind is a spark of the almighty consciousness of God. And yet we allow it to lead us into this thing we do not want to go into and into that thing. Why? Because we do not realize it is God's consciousness. And that we are a part of that. We are the one who should direct the mind. Not the mind direct us, which it does. Let us realize that. And so Master continues, I could show you that whatever your powerful mind believes very intensely would instantly come to pass. Think of it. Why not? God can do anything. Of course, he follows his law. But sometimes he supersedes it. Take on the cross. There was the thief. All's well that ends well. This day you shall be in paradise with me. So let us not be hoodwinked by looking into the future that things are going to be different. Right now, now demand. Father, 
I may be weak, but still I know you are in me. Give me the strength to go ahead and do and live victoriously. And so that come, takes us to the next point, the power of will. The power of will is, is supreme if united with God's will. Alone I can do nothing. All the saints say that. But when thou art in me, O Father, all things are possible. Now they all things. That is what we must not misunderstand. All things means those things of lasting eternal truth are possible. That's what we want. Not just to materialize an automobile or a house or a wife or anything like that, but to know the source of all things, God himself, then all things are possible according to his will. Now, will is a very important thing. As I said in the beginning, this path is not for lazy people. It is not for lazy people. Those who use their will and those who unite their will with God's will are the ones who win. Meditation is the greatest way to unite your will with the presence of God. Meditation in which you supersede ego consciousness, which is behind the limited human will. Human will is limited. But there comes a time when you feel the presence of God within you that you know it is God's will that is operating, not yours. Feeling that all things are possible and that the all things mean the kingdom of God, not this worldly kingdom. That isn't what you want. That passes away. When death comes, that will be have, have to be left behind. But when you feel all things of God, that's living victoriously, surely. And one other point before I leave that subject of will is that all things, the final step is not your will. It is not your will united with God's will, but it is God's grace. He's the one that gives you that final step because he is the doer of all things. It passes above will to the understanding behind the will, which is God's great consciousness and love itself. That's why all things must be followed. All things of a metaphysical nature or a prayer, nature of prayer, must be followed by a submission to God's will. That's not cowardice. That's not that. That's full understanding, and if you do that, you are truly wise if you submit to God's will. That's why Jesus said, who can add one cubit to his stature? Who can make a cell of the body? God is the doer. We must understand that and submit willingly. Then you will see his hand guiding you in everything, in every action. One more reference at this time from Master's little book, Law of Success. Divine will has no boundaries. It works through laws known and unknown, natural and seemingly miraculous. It can change the course of destiny, wake the dead, cast mountains into the sea, and create new solar systems. That's what God did when he created this universe and this, all the universes. He used his will. If we unite with that will, then we also can be powerful according to his will. Man, as an image of God, possesses within him that all-accomplishing power of will. But it's wonderful to realize that, that God is the sole doer in all things. That takes it out of the realm of probability. He is the one. Unite with him. He who has such wisdom which we cannot comprehend and we do not even dedicate and submit ourselves to him who has made all things. It's foolish, isn't it, when you face the truth. But these are facts. Another point I bring up at, at this time is do not be concerned with what others are doing or have done. We spend too much time listening to what others are, are doing. I have done. What have you done? What have I done? That's the point. Each one of us is God's particular child and has a particular job to do. 
That's what we should be intent on and bent upon understanding what our job is, what we are to do for God and that we take him with us in every action. We are safe if we remember. Whatever you do, do to please God. Whatever you do, do to please him. It will not make any difference if someone sees heaven ten times over. What of it? If you don't see it, what good does it do you? It's what you see. It's what you know that really amounts to something. So I asked the Lord to take care of you. That's the easiest way. I used to be interested in all these things. I asked and said, what's the matter with you anyway? Why don't you pray, God, reveal thyself and let it go at that? So I've been doing that ever since. Father, reveal thyself is the greatest prayer. A little vision is what? Compared to God's protection and conscious protection and understanding within yourself. There's no comparison. Let us live victoriously with God. Then we can amount to something and understand things. And so whatever you are doing, are you being victorious in understanding the goal of life and gaining it. What is it? Uniting your consciousness with God's consciousness, that's all. Uniting your consciousness with his love, that's all. God is love. He who loveth not is not of God. We want to live victoriously, let us understand, and then follow the scriptures until we reach the goal of life. All's well that ends well, as I have said. Never mind, you've seemingly made a mess of life, what of it? God is right there waiting now. Submit to him. You'll feel him in you. All's well that ends well. Do not look to the future right now. Right now, while you have your consciousness intact and your ability to unite your consciousness with God, do it. Do it. Do it tonight in meditation. If you cannot do it right at this moment, just feel his presence. That's all. It's so simple. The humble shall know God. The pure in heart shall know God. The simple children shall know God. Suffer the little ones to come unto me. That's what God is. If we can do that, we will live victoriously. And finally, in closing, let us not forget. He can only be called a victor who has attained victory not only in the physical and mental planes, but in the spiritual plane. That's the greatest thing. As I said, if we lay up things which death is going to wipe away from us, that's not being victorious in anything. But if, on the other hand, we give a little time every day to meditation, and do not forget God, that's all. He doesn't want too much from us. But one thing he will not stand, and that is to forget him. Because he's the doer, he's the giver. Do not forget the giver of all things. And if we do that, his joy and peace and bliss in our soul will be dynamic to our consciousness and we will live victoriously. As one great saint said, he who knows, feels God's love, has life eternal. Isn't that victoriously living? He who does not know God's love will be in death eternal. Well, there you have your answer. It's up to each one of us not to sleep anymore, but to wake up and realize our oneness with God. In so doing, we will have the greatest victory because God is all. God is all. Now I'll close with reading from Master's uh, little book, Law of Success. When you convince God that you want him above all else. That's all. That's all it takes. Think of it. Now, you know yourself as well as I know that you cannot convince God that all you want is his presence, his love, unless your heart is clean and pure and there's no dross in it. It's the dross, the meanness, the lack of straightforwardness with God and faith in him. If there's any of that, he knows it. That's why Master has written this. When you convince God that you want him above all else, you will be attuned to his will. When you continue to seek him, no matter what obstacles arise, think of it, leave not God's side. That's what Master said. Leave all else but never his side. So when you do that,
Continue to seek him no matter what obstacles arise to take you away from him. That points out that things will arise to take us away from him. Do not think they're not going to come because they will. You have got to be adamant in one thing. Come what will, come what may, I will never leave thy side. That's all you have to do. But you've got to mean it and do it. Then God understands. Then he is convinced. Then you will find that you are using, not using only your human will, but God's will united with it. You will thus operate the law of success that was known to the ancient sages, and that is understood by all men who have achieved true success or have lived victoriously.